Welcome to part two of the College Algebra Final Exam Review video series. I recommend pausing the video throughout and trying the problems on your own to make sure you have a good understanding of the concepts. Now let's get to the problems. If you have not yet watched part one of this series, I recommend watching that first. For this problem, they want us to multiply 5 minus 3i times 3 plus i. When we see i's in problems like these, we should recognize that they are having us multiply the imaginary number i. Keep in mind that i is defined to be the square root of negative 1. i squared would then be the square root of negative 1 squared, which is negative 1. So when we multiply these i terms together, we are going to have i squared, and we will need to change that to negative 1. So let's treat this like a FOIL problem. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times i is positive 5i. Negative 3i times 3 is negative 9. And negative 3i times i is negative 3i squared. We have some simplifying still to do. We need to change the i squared to negative 1, so that will get multiplied by the negative 3 attached to it. The 15 can drop down at this point since it's simplified. 5 minus 9 is negative 4, so this term becomes negative 4i. After we multiply the negative 3 and negative 1, we will have a positive 3 for the last term. We can bring down the 15 minus 4i, and then we can add 15 and 3 together to get the final answer. So the final answer is 18 minus 4i. This next problem wants us to round e to the 7th to two decimal places. Problems like this involving e are referring to the e to the x button on a calculator. This button is often found by using the second function of the natural logarithm button, which looks like ln. So I'm just going to use my calculator for this problem. I'm going to hit the second function followed by the natural logarithm button and then type in the exponent 7. The answer it's giving me is 1096.63315 and so on. This problem wants us to round to the nearest hundredths since we need to round to two decimal places. So we just need a number that is that long. We need to look at this number to decide whether we need to round up or stay the same. Since this number is a 3, it is less than 5, so we will keep the 3 in front of it the same. So the final answer is 1096.63. This next problem is an exponential equation. We should notice that the bases of the exponents, the 9 and 27, can both be changed to base 3. First, I'll write 9 as 3 squared, and that 2 will get multiplied in the exponent by x plus 1. Then I'll write 27 as 3 cubed, and that will get multiplied in the exponent by the 3x. We can then use the property that states that if the bases of the exponents are the same and they are equal to one another, that means their exponents are equal. In essence, we can cancel out the three bases. We'll set the exponents equal to each other to solve the problem. Distributing the 2, we get 2x plus 2 equals, and the right side is 3 times 3x, which is 9x. We can then move the x terms all to one side by subtracting 2x, and 2 equals 7x. Dividing both sides by 7, we get the final answer, which is x equals 2 sevenths. It's best to always check your answers. We can substitute x equals 2 sevenths into the equation to check this. 9 to the power 2 sevenths 
plus 1 is approximately equal to 16.86 in a calculator. Now let's try 27 to the 3 times 2 sevenths by substituting 2 sevenths into the exponent here. This is also equal to 16.86 approximately in a calculator, so we know our answer is correct. This problem is in the form of a polynomial with e as the base rather than an x. Oftentimes we use what's called a u substitution for these problems where we set u equal to e to the x and if we were to square that we get u squared equals e to the 2 times x which is e to the 2x. This is what allows us to substitute substitute u squared for the first term and u for the middle term being multiplied by the negative 3. At this point we can factor this polynomial. u times u is u squared and negative 2 times negative 1 equals positive 2 and adds up to negative 3. Setting both of these equal to 0 we can solve for u. u equals 2 and u equals 1. At this point we want to change u back to what it equals, which was e to the x. Now keep in mind we're trying to solve this problem for x, not e to the x. This is when natural logarithms come in handy, is when you have an e to a certain power. If we do natural log of both of these equations on both sides, essentially the natural log and e cancel, this x gets brought down in front. So we just basically get x times 1, which is x equals natural log 2 as well as x equals natural log 1. However, the natural log of 1 can be simplified further as that equals 0. So our two answers here are natural log 2 and 0. This problem involves a logarithmic equation. When there is a log on just one side of the equation, we often want to rewrite the logarithm into exponential form. We can do this by taking the base of 3 to the exponent 2 and setting it equal to the argument, which is x minus 4. This makes for an easy problem to solve. 3 squared is 9, and adding 4 to both sides, we get x equals 13. We could always check this to see if it works. Log base 3 of 13 minus 4, we're checking to see if that equals 2. 13 minus 4 is, of course, 9, and 9 could be written as 3 squared, which is one way to see that these are equivalent. Log means what is the exponent on base 3 of 3 squared, and that exponent is 2. Since 2 equals 2, this answer checks. To be notified when the next video of the series is completed, please subscribe to my channel. I encourage you to try all these problems again and see if you can verify them on your own. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe for more math tips.